Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art Battle at Daytona Beach. We are here in the sunshine today with 12 incredible artists uh, about to head up to the easels in just a few seconds. Uh, they will have 20 minutes on the clock faced with a blank canvas and will turn those works into masterpieces in an effort to capture your votes. So head on over to artbattle.com slash vote so that you can vote for your favorite artists. Round number one, starting very shortly. Art Battle C. Riverfront Arts District. I am your host and master of ceremonies this afternoon. My name is the young professor Matt Grafer, and folks, this is the kickoff to the art battle season. That's right, we have multiple events all year round, and this is the first one here in 2022. It's going to take place right here at the Daytona Beach Arts Fest here, beautiful downtown Daytona Beach. And folks, let us thank our sponsors for making this all possible. Of course, the Riverfront Arts District, who is presenting this entire thing. Give them a big round of applause, will you? This looks great out here. Imagine Daytona, they are always a huge supporter. The studio by artist Angel Loud, and Angel does a great job. She's a huge part of organizing this effort all the time. Salmon Law Offices, Salty Dog Vacations, Molinus and Madalena, the Justice Attorneys, and Marsha Cooksey from Remax. Those are our sponsors. Please give them a big round of applause, will ya? None of this stuff happens without people who support the arts and encourage it. I want to thank our event organizers. We mentioned Angel, but the studio by artist Angel Loudon. Josh Lieberman from Imagine Daytona. Teresa Lieberman from Imagine Daytona. And Kent Bates, local artist and live event coordinator. They have helped put this together. They got the staging, they got the equipment, and they're bringing you a good time this Saturday. So give them a big round, will you? And of course, a big shout out to our VIPs. They are sponsoring the Art Fest itself out here. Of course, we've got Brown and Brown Insurance, Jeep Beach, which will be represented here on the stage, Burgoyne Villages, and Point Grand Apartment Homes. Now, just so you're aware of what's at stake here today, artists are competing for a chance at the Ormond Daytona Regional Competition, and then they will go on to the state championship, national and international championship. Yes, this thing goes far and wide. I know we have a lot of people. This is your first art battle. This is not our first art battle. We did one back in December. We had a kind of trial run a few years back, and this thing is nationwide. I know the headquarters is located up in Canada. This kind of stuff happens all the time, and someone here today We'll qualify and move on to region, states, and possibly nationals. So if you're into this sort of thing, there's a lot of good resources. Chat with some of our staff here about Art Battle here locally and nationwide. Speaking of our next event, in case you're wondering when that will be, it's going to be on Friday night, May the 6th. Art Battle Daytona Beach will take place at 1 Daytona. Go to the Imagine Art Orman Daytona Facebook page for event information. We are going to have 12 artists competing here today on this stage. We'll have three rounds. We've got two rounds with six artists apiece, and then we will have our finalists move on to a championship round before we crown our victor here today. And of course, I want to give a shout out to the Dr. Rhythm, Tim Baker, our DJ, for keeping the sounds nice and loud. 
Also, folks, before I move on and get to our introductions of our artists, we do have a 50-50 raffle going on, and here's what it will do. You can go over to the tent over there, the registration tent, get in. $5 tickets. You can win half the pot, and the half will go to our winners today as well, because a lot of this money is going to go to charity, but you can go ahead and help support the artists as they go to victory here today. Sam, let's get a little, uh, let's get a little pump up music, shall we? Because we're gonna, we're gonna start introducing some artists here. All right, I'm gonna introduce you to our artist standing here to my left in position number one. This adrenaline junkie's go-to materials are pens, markers, and graphite. And easel number one, I want you to make some noise for Isabella Surano. Drunk is a 15 year old high school student. She's here to throw down and show what she's got here. Next up in position two, this artist is a performance artist still in stilt walking and full cinematic and theatrical costume. The concept will be special effects makeup and staging. A third generation artist on the art studio where he sold his paintings and featured several local Southwest Florida painters. He's a master of ceremonies, much like myself. That's why we want to get along so well, ladies and gentlemen. At easel number two, the performance artist, hyper realist painter, special effects whiz, John Schellinger. <laughs> At easel number three, looking very unassuming as she waits to get up on the stage. I see what you're doing. I feel it. I've got the same picture for the showman she as well. Colorful, bold, fun, mixed media abstract artist with an intuitive process. She says she likes to get in the zone, and I think she's about ready to get in the zone here. She's got a signature palette of warm, happy hues. I think the local artist Bob Ross would have liked that sort of thing. Ladies and gentlemen, at easel number three, this mixed media maestro incorporates unexpected materials. Welcome, Ricky Scott. number four today. Representing Jeep Beach here this afternoon. She is into live painting. Yes, that's what we're doing here today. Recurring elements were to fast cars, animals, yeah. metallic, Laura. texture, right colors, and body contrast. She has a degree in studio art from the University of North Carolina in Billington. Worked part-time in paint in six studios during school. And purchased her own Southern Pines, North Carolina after graduating. Ladies and gentlemen, armed with speed at easel number four, the enthusiastic live painter with a bright and wild style, the colorful Laura. Next up, this painter, photographer, and glass artist started stained glass work in 1980 by restoring leaded glass. Received the 2019 honor from the Women in the Arts of Orlando, Florida for her piece, West Side Story. She created a number of public art pieces with her creative partner, Tommy Toby. She and Tommy are the owners of Dream Art Glass. They have a home studio in Ormond Beach. She is the president of the Florida Women's Art Association and has an umbrella exhibit right here at the Museum of Arts and Sciences until May. Please welcome at this time, L.C. But not least, up on the stage in round number one. Moved here to Florida in Ormond Beach in 2014. Loves to use some oils, acrylics, and watercolors. Other creative pursuits include sun catchers made from vintage crystals, Mardi Gras masks, and jewelry. I think she's going to fit in just fine around here, inspired by the tranquil ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, the photorealistic painter, Marianne Bruna. Timer here, ready, right in front of me. 
Artists, are you ready? Yeah. Daytona Beach Arts Festival, are you ready? Yeah. Well, let's count them down in five, four, three, two, one. Let the battle begin. All right, hello everyone and welcome to Art Battle Daytona Beach. We are here in the sun today, uh, ready to let the paint fly and have some fun. My name is Morgan Booth and I'm here with Art Battle co-founder Simon Plashkis. Hi, Simon. Oh, hello, Morgan. Here we are in the sun and it is a great day for live painting. Yeah, it looks like these artists are already uh, just having a blast and we've got a great crowd uh, checking out everybody working. Well, the Daytona Beach artists have been uh, a really fantastic and um, uh, fast, fast advancing art battle crew out there. And I cannot wait to see what they bring today. It's a heavy competition and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, check out. I also uh... think I just heard our host say sun's out, guns out. And it's so <laughs> rare that you get an opportunity to say that. So I I'm glad that that's the vibe we're starting with today. Yeah, for sure. Like there's such a joyful a joyful vibe on site. And we've got a couple of our artists uh, choosing to work on the tables. So I'm wondering whether or not that's a gravity strategy of controlling the flow of the paint, or if that's uh, what they've decided to do uh, in light of the wind. Looks like we actually have one of our volunteers holding on to the easels to make <laughs> sure uh, that they don't blow away. It's a windy day in Florida. Yeah, it's partly sailing, partly art battle, but you know, you gotta, this is the restrictions we work and deal with as artists. You gotta overcome. Yeah, it's called art battle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like we've got uh, Isabella Serrano here. And she's working in a really uh, tight way with a smaller brush. Um, very interesting. It's so, uh, she's so focused in the, the center. Um, thus far. And John uh, Schellenberg here giving us some natural tones. Oh, and a, a water spray bottle. I always love seeing that. And that's actually a smart move on a windy, sunny day. Uh, a real opportunity to, uh, you know, work, work with, to move the paint around, but still not get caught into the problem of having a wet canvas, which can cause problems for adding detail later in the round. Yeah, he's giving himself a great opportunity uh, there for control of the open time of the paint. Um, and for anyone watching who's not familiar with some of the technical terms, open uh, for in terms of paint means how long it stays malleable, how long it stays wet. Great. Thank you, Morgan. Look at this suit on our host there. <laughs> it's Amazing. incredible. Yeah, that's an incredible uh, suit. And he also has the shoes to match, too. And the, the sunglasses. <laughs> oh, look at these dots on Canvas 6. Uh, I think that that is Elsie Toby. And Elsie has actually painted in Art Battle before. Uh, most of our artists today are brand new to Art Battle, but Elsie has started painting um, in December. So still pretty recent. This is her second Art Battle, uh, but she just came back to play. Okay, Laura Ashley. So Laura is a, an artist that I'm super excited about seeing today because she's actually a career live event painter. Oh, there's not too many of those. Fantastic. And I'm just uh, determining who this is. Great palette. Really, really like these oranges and yellows uh, with a little bit of that uh, sort of dusty turquoise in there. Yeah, this is uh, Ricky Stofsky. And Ricky incorporates a lot of collage elements into her work, which is what we're seeing here. We've actually got, looks like, um, some fabric adhered to the canvas at this point. Oh, wow. Interesting approach. 
Look at this character with that obviously uh, self-painted uh, uh, skeleton rib jacket. I hope we're not going to see a skull out of this. We've seen so many skulls lately, but maybe I already see a couple of eye shadows in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll have to wait and see. We've got 15 minutes left on the clock. Um, and for anyone who is new to Art Battle, what you have to do is ch help us choose the winning artists today. So you're going to vote for the best artists uh, in this round and in the next round, and then they will move forward into a final where a single winner will be crowned. So you can do that at artbattle.com slash vote. Yeah, everyone's welcome to vote. You'll get a, a, a special text link that's specific just to your phone number, and you'll be welcome to vote and bid. These paintings will all be available for a silent auction uh, through that same link as well. Uh, great prices, um, especially at this sort of event. And I like that we're seeing, uh, I really feel like Ricky is approaching this piece as she would in the studio. We're seeing her uh, with all of these different materials. She really came prepared. And, uh, oh, I love, she's so tactile. Look at her. She's uh, getting those spatters from her fingers. And she's right in there on the canvas with those fingers. Incredible. Well, that's, it's, it's cool. You really feel like you're in there with her. And I feel like the really art the, the artists as well as our MC brought it with their uh, their fashion today too because we can see that Laura is matching her painting with these star pants um, and her execution of the flag on her piece. Oh man, um, that's and, a real vote getter. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Awesome. You, you got to match. Who doesn't love matching, especially in art? Yeah, it uh, it just creates a consistency and like almost helps you become a character to the audience that people can relate to. Well, I mean, you know, she's definitely playing to the hometown crowd. They're very patriotic over in Daytona Beach. We've got the classic, you know, eagle on top of American flag. Um, so I, I, uh, I think it's, I think she's going to get a few votes just for that. I think so too. And uh, here we are with Elsie Toby. And this piece is so interesting to me because I, I know that she has a background in doing abstracted works in stained glass. So I really feel like she's bringing uh, that form of art to us in, in painting. It's very interesting. I love the logic of it. You know, it's almost like, um, you know, like a, a mechanistic plant. Yes. Um, yeah. Very, very cool. Wow, this uh, this piece by Marianne is just stunning. And so she is known for doing ocean views, but I got to say, it's not often that you see a night scene ocean view, and she's just executing this so beautifully. Incredible. And we're only you know, less than eight minutes in here. Uh, she's got a lot of time to continue to add that detail as she's doing. And it'll be interesting also to see how uh, Elsie's piece evolves because right now I'm loving how much negative space there is. Um, and I feel like this space has the appropriate amount of breathing room. So we'll have to see. Uh, it's There could potentially be the danger of overworking it with almost 12 minutes left on the clock. And we can see Marianne uh, using her fingers to blend the paint and to just create kind of this halo glow effect around the stars that she's got going on. Oh, and some more rapid movements from Elsie. We've seen her uh, super careful considered application up until this point and now we're getting more uh gestural expressive um energy content brushwork from her i think she's being inspired by the wind <laughs> you can see it's, it's really moving out there yeah and something that uh i don't think that can be discounted as well is how well does the piece communicate from a distance? Because that's always really important in art battle as well. Uh, not only are we looking for 
the finished piece and how it looks on its own just as a composition, but also um, in an audience art sportification like this, you really have to be conscious of how the audience is seeing it and understanding that they're uh, maybe at more of a distance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So that fine detail work, you know, is it may be not worth the investment. You know, obviously the people can see here, we can see online, uh, but the, the direct audience there, uh, you know, you really need to make an impression with the large blocking and, and, uh, and the message of the piece. Yeah. I really feel like Laura's doing a great job uh, with that here, with that eagle. That's a very good eagle. I was surprised at some of the color choices down in the plume of the eagle there, but yeah, it's working beautifully. Pink. Yeah, it's not a, a it's not a color you'd expect to see. And we who's see... the artist who's doing our our stained glass piece here? I love that piece. That's fantastic. Uh, the stained glass piece is Elsie Toby, and here we are with Ricky Stofsky and this. Uh, collage heavy piece i love uh checking out what she's doing she's adhering more materials to the canvas and if we look closer we can also see uh in these circles it looks like she's used something to stamp the canvas wow the the range of um technique and materials application here is you know, very, very high at the top of uh, all of our artists. And the result, which you might think could be sort of a, you know, a bit messy potentially with all of those different approaches, is got um, a, a fantastic appeal to it, a really nice abstract piece. And here we are with John Schellenberg again. Um, and looks like we're getting a portrait from him. I know that you were thinking uh, maybe it would possibly be a skull, but I'm actually Thank thinking you, John. that Isabella might be, uh, who is right beside him, might be executing a skull right now. <laughs> <laughs> so she, maybe she's taking. You can't get away from the skulls. Yeah, we love the skulls. I mean, I think it's because. Um... You know, you can focus on the structure of the face rather than having to do the whole piece. But thank you, John. Thank you. This is a beautiful portrait and almost a bit of a Van Gogh feeling to it here. Yeah, I appreciate uh, the subtleties here in the color transitions. But yes, very Van Gogh and kind of like the structure of the face and the content here. Okay, Bobby. I'll see you again. So just seven minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. Uh, for our audiences that are watching out there, we really need you to support these artists and choose who you want to see paint again in the final round. So the top two artists from this round will move on to the final, and you can help us choose those by going to artbattle.com slash vote and choosing your favorite. Fantastic. Well, we're coming into the home stretch here, and we're uh, a lot of these artists are doing um, fantastic additions of detail in in these final seven minutes. And uh, uh, that's, you know, we were talking about the, the the audience here is at a bit of a distance. So, of course, the sort of the main message of the piece, but also that detail is, uh, for me at least, what really takes it uh, over the line to find out who our winner is for this round. Yeah, absolutely. I'm loving it. Uh... Every time we go back to Ricky, she's doing something different. So now we've got a marker and she you can just see her considering where she wants to be placing these lines. Um, I'm thinking that this might even be a guitar or, you know, I could just be seeing what I want to see. I feel like our brains are always trying to uh, place objects in uh, abstract paintings. It's so hard to tell. I'm seeing rooster. <laughs> It's not though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking about chicken sandwiches. Speaking of chicken sandwiches, look at this eagle. I think that's my favorite transition ever. Uh, <laughs> I love, uh, check out this gold here. This gold is really liquidy um, and she's putting it on so rapidly. This almost feels like to me the final strokes, but I know she has uh, almost six minutes left on the clock.
That's going to be a big vote getter. So um, it's very interesting. I can see that the the voting is open now. We have uh, we have a, vote, a few votes coming in, but encourage you to uh, you know wait and see uh, what the rest is. But if you've already got your favorite pick, you can uh, go in and vote right now. This piece is so fun uh, from Elsie. It's almost like a, a much looser Madrian kind of boho boho spoil. Mm-hmm. Wow, just blown away by this piece uh, by Marianne. And now uh, she's just getting these smaller stars executed uh, with this spattering technique. Wow, really fantastic. Just look it's at got, the way that wave you know, just creeps onto the beach. Yeah, and it has... Um, there's like gray whale colors in it too. I mean, it is it is clearly that beach scene, but it's calling itself to some of the shapes or sort of a larger sea creature. Oh, great point. I don't think I'd seen that before. Oh man, I'm so into this. I'm so into this painting. Wow. It's so rare you get, the, you know, the audience especially does does not gravitate towards these abstract pieces. But I could stare at them for so much longer than some of the, you know, some of the more obvious pieces. So there's a magic to it. Feel free to uh, to look in tightly there. Oh, and more of this fuchsia uh, making its way onto Laura's eagle. Again, an interesting choice with this color. Um, she's given us a few unexpected elements, but I do feel that they're working together. The audience is having a good time in there. Oh, definitely. Appreciate that. Seeing lots of phones out and smiles. It's so windy that uh, we can actually see that uh, Isabella's canvas is duct taped to the easel. Yeah, well, that's, uh, and then you just got to worry about the easel itself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're seeing Marianne uh, almost wiping out those stars that she put in there. Last minute decision. Last minute decision, yeah. Two minutes, uh, two minutes and change. So now is the time to cast your votes. Uh, all of these pieces are also available to bid on uh, in silent auction at that link as well. Like they're really... Uh... And on both the eagle and the stars, I mean, it really, it's popping off the canvas. It's, her shadow work and her layering are are fantastic here. Well, yeah, gotta, gotta hand it to her. She uh, live full-time live event painter. Yeah, great. Well... If you need someone at your wedding or your bar mitzvah, she is she is the way to go. This month that she is painting in honor of her son. I am friends with her personally, and she is one hell of a mother, I'll tell you that. And one badass painter as well. Her palette's loaded in easel number two. Give it up for Rachel. Oh, well.
artist is bold at that because she was not on our lineup. She was not on our list. She was not scheduled to do her thing today, but by God, when the spot opened up about 10 minutes ago, she said, what do you coach? I'm ready to play. Give it up for Christina Davis Dula. From Floyd, Virginia, a one stop by town to hear the beautiful Riverfront District in Daytona Beach, Florida. She is colorful and spiritually inspired, a beautician and a health coach, sparkling her way onto the stage at Easel number six. The spiritual creative uses art as a form of meditation and healing. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Caroline Lefebvre. All right, artists, the professor has to get his timer out. I'm juggling a lot of things in my hands, but you will have 20 minutes to go. Everyone else, you can still vote in round one. We will probably be closing that voting sometime soon, so head over to the registration table and get your votes in. Artists, I've got my timer ready. Are you ready, everybody? Daytona Beach, are you ready? And let's count them down in five, four, three, two, one. Let the balance of two be All right, hello and welcome back to Art Battle Daytona Beach. We are here with round number two and six awesome artists on the easels and 20 minutes only on the clock. So these guys are not only battling uh, the Florida sun and the wind, but a blank canvas and the clock. My name is Morgan Booth and I'm here with Art Battle co-founder Simon Plashkis. Hi, Simon. Hey, Morgan. We're All right, happy today. to be here on this beautiful day. It's so rare we get to do an art battle uh, outdoors and such. Uh, and, and usually the reason is because we don't have enough volunteers to hold all of the canvases down because of the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a windy day for sure. But uh, it looks like these guys know what they're doing. Yes, absolutely. A good group. All right, who have we got up here? I am thinking that this is Caroline Lefebvre, and looks like she's got uh, some tape on her canvas already. Oh, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she's taking her time at the beginning. That probably evens it out. Yeah. Oh, I like that she's working with a glass palette. That's going to do uh, wonders to help her keep her paint wet. Yes, exactly. And especially on this windy, sunny day. And Caroline uh, has told us that she has a very spiritual practice. She connects with art uh, through meditation and uh, uses it for emotional regulation as well, which I think is such a, a great little piece of insight for us as we watch her today. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's so important to know yourself and for an artist who has been... Uh, you know, practicing that for a long period of time, uh, no doubt we're going to see some great depths that that uh, that a less experienced artist might not provide. I'm excited about it. And here we are with uh, Nisa Milan. And it looks like we're getting uh, quite a heavy water application and lots of this kind of cerulean uh, going into an aqua um, and finishing with a yellow. So this beautiful gauge uh, gradient already in just a few minutes. Yeah, fantastic. We might be seeing some sort of a landscape here. Uh, it's the right sort of colors. Very dark uh, from Caroline here. Really, really dark in the top portion of the canvas. I wonder whether or not uh, she's going to flip this around or anything like that. I feel like I'm so used to seeing the uh, the heavier more weighty colors at the bottom of a composition so i'm interested to see where she goes with this 
I don't think she's going to flip it on account of the canvas having been taped uh, taped on. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> so I, we in the first round we saw uh, sort of a bit of a dark sky painting. So maybe we'll maybe we're going to have dark sky painting uh, version two. Mm -hmm. And here we are with Christina Deagle and getting these these blues almost like shimmering together the way that uh, she's applying. Yeah, very nice brushwork here, um, and uh, yeah, the the bluists will be happy not only with that, <laughs> but uh, her her work so far. Great, looks like it looks like a beautiful day um, here in Daytona Beach. Everybody's having a good time, lots of smiles. Oh, look at that! Uh, who's our next artist there? What what's uh, what can we say about Ryan this? This is Ryan Hooman. Wow. And this is looking already very close to his studio work. His work that I've seen has featured these like incredible, uh, colorful skies with lots of uh, clouds and just beautiful, soft transitions, really paying a lot of attention to uh, light source. So I have big expectations for Ryan. He's, uh, I'm. I'm excited for what he does, but almost sometimes when you're familiar with an artist, uh, that can be a little bit more pressure if the audience knows you already. And Ryan was a previous finalist uh, in another event. It's so tricky, the relationship between your competitive timed work and the studio work. You know, do you mix it up? Do you do you try to replicate? Do those skills apply? It's uh, That's a huge part of the strategy for these artists, as, exactly as you're saying, Morgan, especially if the audience knows them. And so far, so good. Uh, getting these beautiful soft blends. It's fantastic. I mean, it's definitely, it's so funny. We have a few paintings that sort of feel landscape, um, but they have the dark portion on the top of the canvas. Uh, very, very unusual. Yeah, giving us uh, some topsy-turvy landscape works. Defying expectations. I'm into it. And lots of red making its way onto uh, Christina's canvas there in the bottom portion. And back with Caroline. And I can see that she's using a sponge brush to dab and blend her colors. Fantastic. That's it's all, great, it's great so mixing good. she's got going on there. It's yeah, almost it really like a cheat good. code. The uh, sponge brushes. Not that I'm saying she's cheating. I just mean it's like it's a really smart technique in that uh, it's so much easier to achieve blends when you're applying it from a sponge surface. And you know she has so much time left to add detail uh, to the, re to the for the rest of the time. And here we are with Nisa Milan. Uh, and we can really see that she's bracing herself against the canvas, uh, tackling this wind here and bringing us okay. a beautiful landscape. Yeah, that's that's one of the most advanced ones so far, that cloud, that cloud work, which is a huge part of getting a, 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 a landscape with clouds right, is already seeming very, very bang on. This red from uh, Christina is just so strong and it looks like she's blending some yellow into it as well. So almost mimicking in the opposite color palette what she's got going on with the blue in the top of the canvas. It'll be uh, interesting to see the way that she blends those two areas because we gotta have, they're so different right now. Uh, they really need kind of a, harmo uh, a piece to help harmonize them. And looks like Ryan is taking an opportunity to step back from his canvas to assess. I always love seeing that. I think that's such a pro move. 
Yeah, it, it you know it's, it talks to the the state of mind and um, it, it allows you to see it from the audience perspective. You know, you're right in there. Uh, you you might make a bad move. Ooh, and a super dark application um, in the foreground here of our landscape from Ryan. It's really bringing a good sense of balance, I think, um, and also will lend itself well to anything that he wants to add on top of that. I know that he often uh, will incorporate trees in a silhouette form. Oh, look at this. Look at this palette. This is fantastic. And this is Julia Marshall. I love this painting. Uh, Julia is a really expressive uh, painter, and I think that we're seeing that here with this like really gestural, painterly approach to this bird. Wow. Yeah, the purple this, and the yellow this, is so nice. The, yeah, and the bird has such intensity to it. Uh, <laughs> it's just standing there. It's really great. Bit of a, a bit of a, a magic pelican situation here. Yeah. I don't know my Florida birds well enough, but it feels like that might be that direction. And here we are with Rachel Caldwell. Uh, and Rachel is doing a pretty small composition in terms when we're looking at the overall size of the canvas. Uh, so I'm hoping with ten and a half minutes left on the clock that she really expands that. Yes. Definitely Fantastic. treating this more um, like an illustration but it's very, very clean. And you know, here my favorite, we've got some writing in the uh, in the work. Um, <laughs> we'll have to hope, hopefully the cameraman gets in there and we can see what the poetry, uh, the poetry reveals. Yeah. And it's kind of swirling around the figure at this point. Okay, back with Nisa and the way that she's working wow. on this canvas is basically uh, like completely vertical. So that might be a challenge in itself, but I really feel that she is rising to the occasion. This is a gorgeous piece. We're getting the shadows underneath the clouds. We're getting the highlight on top of the clouds. Very sophisticated already in only 10 minutes. Oh, and we can see Caroline uh, is dancing to the music as she's painting. I love knowing that and especially knowing uh, her background as it connects to art in uh, this spiritual practice. Just really uh, getting the sense of joy that she's bringing to this painting right now as she's dancing. I love this dabbing sponge rash. Something I gotta add to, to my studio, I think. The way that she's blending these, uh, these ceruleans into this gorgeous uh, primary yellow. She's doing such a great job of it. It's uh, just soft, beautiful blends, no muddiness anywhere. And here we are with Christina again, and she's chosen to keep a pretty uh, sharp horizon line between her two color temperatures here. And a little bit of a green in the center of that blue. I'm wondering if that is going to stay abstracted or if it's going to um, emerge into being something of this world. All right, back with Ryan, and uh, just as we had suspected, he has added a tree into the foreground of this beautiful landscape. Uh, it's so it's so sharp and well executed, but at the same time, um, it's not looking out of place. It definitely belongs wow. in this landscape. It is it is a, a bit a bit supernatural. Uh, a bit surreal, but also still rooted in the reality. Yeah, this is great a fantastic piece. With that. 
He yeah. uh, describes himself as New Age Bob Ross, and I'm definitely seeing that. I would say more Surrealist Bob Ross. <laughs> surrealist Bob Ross, absolutely. Amazing. The, I mean, those are the classic, um, uh, you know, Surrealist uh, uh, colors. A lot, of, a lot of Picasso action in there. Yeah. Okay, six and a half minutes left on the clock for these artists. And we need your help choosing the best of them. The top two artists from this round will move on to the final to join the top two from round number one. So make sure that you vote for your favorite artist and for the artist that you want to see paint again in the final at artbattle.com slash vote. such a careful application from Ryan here and as we uh, are being treated to this wonderful zoom by our camera person we can tell that uh, the camera is loving Ryan's work as well and we're getting the opportunity to see these beautiful details of the very subtle uh, birds that he's placed into the sky here really helping to establish and create a sense of distance And back with Christina here. Oh, wow. And uh, our camera is panning over to hang out with Caroline, who is now uh, just vibing out and doing a dance. It looks like she's finished her piece and is now uh, just engaging in some full body movement, just really experiencing the sense of joy in art. Wow, that's, that's really incredible, and uh, we're appreciative that she would share that with us. Fantastic. I wonder if the tape is going to come off of this piece. Because we know it's there. Yeah. Maybe she's got if a last Caroline is not concerned sleeve. with that. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> know she's not. Good for her. Wow. I love <laughs> it. Ah, she's stepping back to the easel. Okay, so that was just a break. Oh, wow. And she's pulling out a feather now. Are we, um, I, I messed up our timer, didn't I? Yeah, we have about four minutes left on the clock. Yeah, there we go. Four minutes, not 18 minutes. So she's perfectly timed to get back in there and to, to deliver some, uh, to deliver a final wow to us with uh, a feather and probably the removal of that tape that's lying under there. Check this out. I'm so excited about this feather. She's such an engaging artist to watch. Mm-hmm. Stay here. <laughs> oh, and we can see she's almost uh, like slapping the canvas with the feather. We're getting a note from our MC here. Three minutes remaining. It's so funny. The audience is going to have such a tough time with these all these landscapes. Um, we might have some of our, our more unusual pieces. Uh, uh, the bird, our, um, uh, you know, that taped abstract piece. Um, this is going to be a tough one to beat. Uh, it's going to be a, absolutely a tough one to beat from a landscape point of view. So oh, uh, voting audience, you are welcome to vote now. Artbattle.com slash vote. You can get into your votes. We are ready for you. These soft blends, so, so nice. I'm loving this addition of the purple. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of majesty in this piece.
And now we're seeing him bringing uh, the water in as well. I think Ryan's done a really great job of time management here. He established his major shapes and I uh, really didn't get overly caught up in the details until um, this point where he's got most of his uh, piece completed and now he's going into the details. Just really good prioritization there, I think. I like the way uh, that this spatter yes. has gone to um, kind of take up some of this background space and create engagement in that void. And it's also like this night bird, this night pelican action mm -hmm. because of the these sort of cool, very, very cool palette on the bird itself and bringing in what feels like, you know, a star, star field there. This is, uh, this is going to be a popular piece. I think so too. And uh, yeah, great pointing out that it's a night piece because we we're used to seeing bird portraits. But I don't think I've ever seen one at night and I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very unique. All right, our last 10 seconds here. Let's go to our venue here. Oh, five or six. All you need is a number. We can see our uh, our supporting team is untaping the pieces from the easels now. <laughs> oh, and she's decided to flip the canvas. Very cool. Oh, smart. What a move, of course. I wonder if we're going to see that trick more than once right now. <laughs> wow, this piece is so good. from Caroline. Such intensity. Oh, wow. The, rem the tape removal on that was fantastic. Yeah, nice and crisp. And I really appreciate that the composition um, overlapped the negative space that was left by the tape as well. I feel like it really yes. uh, engaged with it. And that to me is uh, is just so much more interesting than just the, the clean tape lines. I love a disrupted tape line. 